y'all. Welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. I've got a lab for you today. This lab is over the types of chemical bonds. The types of chemical bonds that we're going to see in this lab are metallic, ionic, polar covalent, and non-polar covalent. But I'm going to be calling these type 1 through type 4. You are not going to know what kind of bond. You are going to have to categorize these substances based on the properties. And then after you learn the properties of the different types of bonds that hold these substances together, you'll be able to categorize which substances are held together with which bond. That is the goal. Make sure you have something to make a data table with. If you need to make your own data table, here's an example of what I'm giving in class. So make sure you have your data table, make sure you have something to write with, and let's get started. Okay, here's sample one. First, I'm going to test its conductivity as a solid. We're wanting to see if this light lights up. Next, we want to test to see if it's malleable or brittle. I'm going to use this conductivity tester to test our solution to see if when substance one dissolves in water if it will conduct electricity. Oh and the light comes on. Okay next we've got substance two. Let's make sure and observe its appearance. Okay, I'm going to test its conductivity as a solid. Okay there's our result. Remember this is what a positive result looks like. Here is substance two again. Okay, we want to see if it is going to be brittle or malleable. Now let's see if it's going to dissolve in water. And since it does dissolve in water, let's test its conductivity when it's dissolved in water. Okay, we're ready for substance three. Get a good look at that. Let's see if it will conduct as a solid. Here is a positive. And then let's test substance three. We can test substance three to see if it is brittle or malleable. And if it will dissolve in water. There's no need to test the conductivity of this solution since it did not make a solution. Okay, so let's look at substance four. I'm going to test its conductivity as a solid. What a positive looks like. If it's malleable or brittle, and it will dissolve in water. Okay, let's look at substance five. Let's test its conductivity as a solid. Remember, this is what a positive looks like. Let's see if it's malleable or brittle. Let's 
and see if it dissolves in water. And then let's test this solution to see if it conducts electricity. Okay, let's move on to substance six. Okay, let's see if it conducts electricity as a solid. Here's a positive, and here is substance six. Let's test if it's malleable or brittle. And if it dissolves in water. Substance seven. I am not going to be able to test its conductivity as a solid, as it is not a solid. Um, but I guess we also cannot test if it is malleable or brittle. I guess we can see if it dissolves in water. I say that's a yes. You know, not all liquids will dissolve in water. So don't say, oh, it dissolves because it was a liquid. Okay, since it did dissolve and create a solution, let's test its conductivity as a solution. Let's test it as a solid, test its conductivity. Again, let me show you another positive. I don't know how the lighting affects this, so I just want you to see it each time. Okay, now let me get substance seven. Everything in this is substance seven. It's the same substance, just has a couple of different appearances. Malleable or brittle. Will it dissolve in water? Substance nine, its appearance. Let's see if it conducts as a solid. Positive, substance nine. Malleable or brittle. And will it dissolve in water? And since this does create a solution, let's test that's conductivity. Okay, last sample, sample 10. Let's look at its appearance. Let's see if it conducts as a solid. Let's look at a positive result again. Can you see that? Okay. Malleable or brittle. Does it dissolve in water? Post lab. Y'all know there can't be a lab without a post lab, but there's only three questions. Not that bad. Okay, question one. Put the samples into group of substances with similar properties. So look at your 10 samples, choose a couple of the properties and see if you can organize these into similar groups 
based on those observations. Number two, what properties did you use to group the substances? Now that we know which of the types are labeled what, I want you to tell me which samples do you think are ionic bonds, which samples are polar covalent, nonpolar covalent, and metallic. Y'all, I know nothing is as good as being in the chemistry lab, doing the chemistry lab, on your own, touching everything, doing the things, but I hope this gave you a little bit of insight to what kind of chemical bonds are holding together what kind of substances. Now, at the end, I will go ahead and tell you what type of bond is what type of bond, and I will go ahead and reveal what the 10 substances are. So go ahead and let it roll so you can get that information at the end. Until next time, bye y'all. Now, by the way, type one is an ionic bond. Type two, polar covalent bond. Type three were nonpolar covalent bonds. Type four is a metallic bond.